Uh, good day. Unfortunately, I was not invited to speak at CPAC, but I'd like to share a couple of my thoughts uh, with conservatives across the country, including those who are at CPAC. Uh, first of all, I want to thank CPAC for all they've done. They've brought in policy-minded conservatives into one room. Uh, they brought in some great. They brought in some great speakers from uh, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman to Senator-elect Marco Rubio to Governor Mitt Romney. I believe that the state of conservatism right now is in need of strong leaders because America is in need of strong leaders. This administration, whether it be on cap and trade, government-run health care, or domestic terror trials, has failed to live up to what they promised the American people, and that was a higher standard of leadership. Through its failed economic policies, this administration has caused deficits, bigger government, and in the process have left too many people behind. The administration's foreign policies are mixed. While I thank the president for supporting our troops in Iraq and Afghanistan, I wonder why he hasn't done anything to stop Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. And I wonder why he hasn't supported Israel strongly enough. This administration's failed economic and foreign policies have resulted in a dangerous course that we are heading on for this country. Nonetheless, Barack Obama is still our president, and I believe we have to respect the office that he holds. Nonetheless, though his personal attributes may be applaudable, let me just say that he is wrong for the job, and he lacks the judgment to lead. The same thing that he was elected on in the minds of many people. But today, but this should not be about the president. We know that the president has raised taxes in the form of a national energy tax, wants a government takeover of health care, and wants to try terrorists on our soil. The American people will voice their opposition to these things this upcoming November. I believe that we have to have a coherent, optimistic, and promising agenda for a new direction. While this administration has spent billions of dollars on a failed stimulus that created a few jobs at the expense of many taxpayers, I believe we should be investing in tax cuts, worker retraining, and even some money for research and development and infrastructure. This would not have to cost as much as $787 billion, and it would promote long-term economic growth. Ordinary people, have protested this administration and this Congress's massive spending and massive deficits and, and the, the increase in the size of government greatly. When we look at national security, we applaud this administration in Iraq and Afghanistan, we criticize them on Iran, and we wonder, how come members of Congress are no longer talking about border security? We have to secure our border. Let's do it now, not later, because we can't afford to wait. We also believe that on health care, this administration and this Congress have sought to have a government-run health care, a partisan liberal agenda that in the long run, long run would indeed raise taxes, increase the debt, and take away people's, the quality of people's health care. Republicans have a model in the working in the state of Massachusetts. And that reminds me, CPAC voters have something extremely important to do in the next coming days, and that will be to vote for who should be the next Republican nominee for President of the United States. Governor Mike Huckabee and Governor Bobby Jindal are not going to run, most likely, in 2012. And there is one person amongst you who spoke to CPAC that I believe should be your choice to be the Republican nominee. This individual has a record of working in the private sector, rescuing the 2002 Olympics, and running a state from deficits to surpluses, reforming health care without new taxes and without massive deficits, and that is Governor Mitt Romney. He believes in a strong military, a strong economy, and strong families. To me, Governor Romney's combination is a winning combination, and I ask all of you to cast your vote for Governor Mitt Romney to be the President of the United States because he believes in a stronger America. That should be our goal. He believes in a new direction. He's a reformer, he's a fighter, and we should stand with him as he stood with us so many times in the past. But conservatives have to also recognize that we have a lot of challenges. We have to create jobs in this country. 
We have to stand up for ordinary people. Because it's ordinary people who are at the heart and soul of America, not Wall Street, not K Street, not the special interests, not the lobbyists. It's ordinary people. To do that, we have to do a lot of things. We have to fix health care through the private sector by having more competition to lower costs. We have to reduce taxes on families and businesses. We have to be able to cut the national debt so that we don't see inflation. This administration and this Congress have lost touch with ordinary people. And if Republicans fail to make the case that they're better for the ordinary person, then I believe we will suffer a great election defeat this year. Luckily, luckily, Republicans are standing up for tax cuts to help grow an economy, and the American people are saying, yes, we can. And that's why the Republicans are going to win the House and Senate this year. I don't know if we'll win it completely, but the American people will say, can we cut taxes? Yes, we can. Can we fix health care without a government takeover? Yes, we can. And can we defend this country and have terror trials at Guantanamo and keep Guantanamo open to defend us from the very people who want us dead? The answer is, when defending to defending America, yes, we can. The American people will choose the Republican Party. I'm not a quote-unquote party person. I'm not a rubber stamp Republican, but I do believe that the Democrats' deficits, government-run programs, and lack of a real agenda to create jobs have really hurt them over the past year, whether it be especially on health care, cap-and-trade, and shutting down Guantanamo and having terror trials in this country. The Democrats have proven to be weak and, and relenting. Uh, in, in their policies, which I don't believe have benefited America. Republicans had devastating defeats in 06 and 08. They learned three very important lessons. The American people don't want massive spending. The American people don't want big government. And when America elects Republicans, they want Republicans, not d Democrats who claim to be Republicans, or Republicans who are Democrats but claim to be Republicans. I believe it's time for a change and a new direction for this country, and I ask you to join me in fighting for ordinary people and for freedom across this great land. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me, and God bless America.